guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about what to expect during a psych ward admission. As per usual, this is based off of personal experience. So it might be different for you or you might have experienced something in a different way than I have. But that is kind of the gist of it. It's coming from my experience and my 10 plus hospital admissions. Anyways, that is what I'm going to be talking about today. Let's get started. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the admission process. So for admission, you will get paperwork you have to fill out, you'll get your vitals taken, you'll probably get blood work the following day or day of admission. You'll have to give a urine sample, you'll do swabs, and you'll be asked a lot of questions. And then after your admission, you will get sent to your room so you kind of have an idea of where you're going to stay for however long you're going to be there. But yeah, that's what the admission process is like I guess. The next thing is that clothing is a privilege. Most of the time they will not force you to just be naked. It's a thing that does happen sometimes but it's it doesn't happen often. Clothing is considered a privilege so you have to earn your clothes back a lot of the time so They'll give you hospital clothes to wear, but like your street clothing is usually a privilege. Next is the fact that if you have a one-on-one, -on -one, which is a person that watches you all the time, you will be watched all the time, not sometimes, all the time. They will watch you in the bathroom, when you're changing, when you're showering, sleeping. They will always watch you. I've had a nurse, um, I had to have hands-on people, so I have had a nurse watch me put in a tampon. I've had the same nurse ask me how to use a tampon. So yeah, they watch you do everything. But keep in mind that not everyone has a one-on-one. -on -one. It's very dependent on the situation. Next is the fact that you are basically forced to go to groups or participate in activities. They don't like when you sit in your room all day, even though that's usually what I do, but they sometimes they force you to do groups and stuff like that. You have no control over anything. You don't have control over your medication, your sleep schedule, your meals, your snacks. You don't have control over anything while you're there. You don't have control over visiting hours, you don't have control over what you're wearing, you don't have control over what kind of bedding you have, you don't have control over when you're gonna take a shower next. It's very, you're very powerless in the situation, if that makes sense. Like, you just don't have control over anything that is happening. Next is the fact that everything is locked and that includes bathrooms, that includes where you charge your phone, it includes where all your stuff is kept. Just everything is locked, everything is locked up. The doors are locked, the windows are locked so you don't escape and it's very locked. Like, <laughs> It takes a lot of effort to have a visitor come visit you and yeah, it's just everything is locked up. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is the crappy food. So they serve basically inedible food, but the thing is if you don't eat the food, they get mad at you and force you to have meal supplements. But like no one wants to eat the food. Like it's gross and it's not because I struggle with my eating anymore. It's the fact that it's disgusting. <laughs> but yeah, like if you don't even, if you, if you don't eat the food, you get a meal replacement and half the time the meal replacement's better than the actual food anyways. But it can get kind of annoying not having like decent food. The next thing I'm gonna be talking about is expect to be booty juiced restrained and put in isolation or ICR. So I've experienced all of those multiple times and it is not fun. It's terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. That's what I can describe it as. But basically booty juice is forced medication through an injection and restraints is basically them strapping you to your bed 
and ICR is basically an isolation room with nothing in it except a mattress. Booty juice usually, booty juice restraints in ICR are basically used when you're over, what's the word? When you're, when you're worked up or upset is when these things get used. And I honestly think they overuse it, but who am I to say I'm just the patient? Um, I've been in five point restraints and they honestly don't care. They don't pay attention to you. My hand was blue because it was up here and the other one was down here and this hand was like blue and my mom freaked out on everyone because I couldn't move my arm. But yeah, expect to get an IM, expect to get put in an isolation and expect to be restrained unless you are a model patient that does everything right and does not cause an issue, even when there is things to have an issue about. Because sometimes there are things that making a scene is the appropriate reaction, but they don't think so. Who am I to say? The next thing I'm gonna talk about is temperature. It is either really hot or really cold in there. There's no in between. So be prepared to either be sweating your butt off or freezing your butt off. There's no in between. Now I'm going to talk about blood work. So depending on the medication you're on and why you're there, they might be doing blood work on you multiple times a week, every day maybe. But it really depends on what medication you're taking and why you're there. So you might get blood work often. And going on with that, you probably will end up getting lots of medical tests. I, while well, I've been in the psych ward, I've been lots of times, but I've had like tests for my heart. I've had tests for seizures and like my brain waves and I've had an MRI and like your vitals and all that jazz. And also going on with physical health, they usually weigh you once a week just so they monitor that you're not gaining too much weight and you're not losing too much weight. It can go either way. And the next thing I'm going to talk about is forced treatment. They, if you're there against your will, you will be forced treatment on you. And it sucks because sometimes they're doing things you don't want to do. But because you're there against your will, you have to do them to leave. So they will force you to do treatment you don't want to do. The next thing is phones are a privilege. I know some psych wards do not let you have your phone at all. The one in my city, for the kids side, you cannot have your phone, but on adult, you can have your phone, but you can't have a charger. You have to give it to the staff to charge your phone. And even though you're allowed your phone, they can still take it away if you're misusing it. And same with this. Passes are also a privilege, so if you want to go off unit for recreational therapy or if you want to go on a walk with your family, you have to have passes to do that. So passes are a privilege and you don't get them right away. You have to be there, I think, for 24 hours before you're even allowed remotely off unit. So passes are a privilege, just like phones and clothes. Another thing is that it's really hard to sleep there and it's really hard to sleep because it's so loud and they're shining a flashlight in your face every hour and the beds are uncomfortable as it is so it's really hard to sleep there. And this goes along with sleep is the fact that they come around with a little flashlight. They come around with a little flashlight and shine it in your face to make sure you're not you know, dead. But yeah, it's really annoying. Next up is forced medication and medication changes. So you will be forced medication and if you don't take it, they will force it in you with an injection. And if you don't want your meds changed, well, they're probably going to change your meds. And if you're not on meds, they're probably going to put you on meds even if you don't want to. And lastly, there are designated snack and meal times, so you cannot just eat whenever you want. 
So if you're hungry and it's not snack or meal time, you don't get to eat until that time has come, which kind of sucks because sometimes you get really hungry. <laughs> so that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and if you did, like this video, comment on this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Obviously you don't have to do that. I just really appreciate when you do. Same thing goes for social media. You can go check it out. It's linked in the description box below. You don't have to do that. I just really appreciate appreciate when you do. I even have my Amazon wish list in the description box. Why do I have it there? I really don't know. It just is. And that is it. That is all I have to talk about. I don't know what else to talk about. That is it. That is all. Bye guys.